<coughs> well, that's how one of these things behaves when you put a sorted cube in it. If it starts messing around with the sorted cube, then the camera hasn't recognised the cube has been sorted and all it'll do is mess it up. So it always pays to test one of these things out using a cube that's already sorted and uh, just ensure that the machine can recognise it's already sorted. One thing that's quite critical is the gap between the camera and the cube, which is about 3mm. That is quite critical. That being out of adjustment too close or too far does mess it up. And the other thing that's quite critical is the, uh, the backstop. The backstop there is a switch which tells the computer where the camera is. And uh, we found in the public program we had to modify the position, the head stop is both there and there and there and it does all three. It's the cube. Um, sadly the program is no more, my hard disk crashed and I lost it, so the only copy I have of it is there and it's quite an extensively modified program, little tweaks here and there. You'll notice when the machine is running that when it tips the cube over it wiggles the cube just as it tips over, well that's something I wrote into the software. Um, one or two other little things as well, so, uh, but sadly that program's no more, so, <coughs> excuse me. One thing this thing doesn't do is line the cube up before it starts. You have to do that yourself. And the, there's an extra cog there just for symmetry. That doesn't do anything. That's the main drive cog there. And uh, those fly weights at the back as well help the... Uh, what I was noticing is when the yarn was forward, it tended to fall backwards on its own weight. So those weights there, they put a bit of downward pressure on the axle, stopping the whole thing falling backwards when it should be holding forwards. So that's another, another little innovation. Also helps when you start the machine off to make sure the grab is as far back as it goes against its backstop. And in fact, I actually put another little stop in there to make it work better. The whole grab is changed around. And uh, somebody else is on the phone, so I'll just shut the door. So yeah, I hope that helps. Now, uh, let's try, we'll see how it gets on. Remember, we're still at the testing stage. So we're setting it very gentle tasks. See how this gets on. Now I've got to lean over the camera to set it up, so, uh, excuse me, there we go. Right, I could do with a bit of grease on the main bearing, it's a turntable thing, it is squeaking slightly. Oh yeah, under the cube is a piece of smooth shiny cardboard and uh, I had to massage a tiny amount of Vaseline into that to make the cube tip over smoothly. And something else to be aware of is that not all Rubik's cubes are the same size. We had uh, we had I actually tried end up several trying up several different makes and types of tubes cubes before I got one to work. And in the end, <coughs> oh, <coughs> excuse me, no, that's a black and white camera. It wouldn't find enough colour differentiation on a normal coloured cube. So I went to a company called CubeSmith and got a set of grayscale stickers for that cube. And that's why all sides are grey, white and black. But I retained the original orange squares on the original cube because uh, because the machine is grey, white, black and orange. So I retained one orange side and found out uh, and it uh, here it's calculating now. That, that blipping is it's calculating. It's done it. I didn't line the turntable up properly when I put the cube in things. It's slightly off squiff, but uh, it's done it. So, 
Now for the big test. Keep on nattering until the camera runs out of film because uh, the more more uh, tips and ideas that come to mind, the more uh, you've got chance of sorting out your own machine. So, uh, yeah, that little sheet of cardboard that you put in there, they, they, ask, they ask you to do that in the uh, building instructions. So I had to decide Vaseline into it. There's quite a lot of fiddling to get it running reliably. And I haven't run it for about a year now. When I came back to running it reliably, it wouldn't tip the cube over. The cube kept falling out. And I found that putting another stop in there to move the arm a bit forward changed it. Um, it's funny how I talk in reverend tones over the machine. Maybe it's something to do with the unbelievable brilliance of something made out of Lego sorting out a really the cube. But yeah, those stickers are from www.cubesmith.com and the, uh, I modified the software. The software is actually written in a program I think called Bricks, B-R-I-C-X if I remember. It's not the Lego Zone software writer, it's one that's freely available on the internet and uh, with all these free things, they sometimes ask for a donation, and when, I, when they do that, I check that it works, and when it does, I always give them a donation, and of course, because it does work, I gave them a donation, and uh, PayPal, and yeah, that blipping is going to make that, so I'm trying to work things out, the camera's still running, I'm going to run out of film, probably, while I'm nattering on. Well, it should like it's working things out. If it starts going blip, 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 okay, higher and higher and higher and higher in pitch, but never actually sorting it out, that means it's uh, misread the cube and it's got confused. But yeah, that is working reliably. Really, so I'm stuck with that. The only thing I find is when I come to set it up, when I have to rock it a little bit that way for putting the next cube in. Yeah, I'm pleased with that. Oh yeah.